the cultivation of Islam is a very important part of our deen. My Sheikh Sheikh Ahmed Obama said that Iman and Islam are made perfect by Islam. Let me say that again. Iman and Islam are made perfect by Islam. God consciousness, being aware of Allah. You have to do everything just for the pleasure and blessing of Allah. There's a famous hadith where the Prophet Muhammad salam, says, there was a man who fought in jihad. He died and went to hell. There was a man who fasted in Ramadan a lot. He died and went to hell. There was a man like me teaching knowledge in the mosque. He died and went to hell. There was a man who was fighting in jihad. He died in the battle of jihad, but he went to hell. The Sahabas asked him, hey, beautiful Bismillah. The Sahabas asked the Prophet, how did these people, another man, he gave in charity a lot. He died and went to hell. They asked the Prophet, how did these people do these good acts, but end up in Jahannam? It, sound, it sounds contradictory. The Prophet explained to the Sahabas, peace be upon him. The man who gave in charity, he gave in charity not for a law, so people could say that he was generous. They said that about him. He got what he wanted. He went to hell. The man who died in jihad, he was not fighting for Allah. He was fighting so people would say he was brave. He died and went to hell. The man who was fasting in Ramadan was fat. There's a verse in the Quran, fight with little Muslim. Woe to those who are making salat. Some people come to the mosque and make salat, but they don't make no salat at home. Come on, be honest. Some people come to the mosque here. It makes a lot. My Sheikh said it's easy to be Muslim in the mosque. Try it on 125th Street with them dope fiends. It's real easy to be Muslim in the mosque. Islam is something you need to try to find out what it is and how you can put it into your life because there's such a thing called Ria. Has anyone heard of Rhea? Not Reba, but Rhea. What is Rhea? Rhea is when you do something for show so other people can see you. People make a lot at home. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Hamdulillah ar-Rahim. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki al They get to the masjid. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. You try to sound like an Arab. If you're, if you're a Fatiha at home, sounds different than you're a Fatiha in the Masjid, that's Ria. You're not getting no Barakah for that. Do you see what I'm trying to get at? The person who has Issan, his worship at home, or her worship at home, is the same as her worship in the Masjid. Come on. In the path of Tasawuf, my sheikh in West Africa told me the entire path is in the verse of Quran. He indeed succeeds who purifies it. How many people heard this ayah? The entire Sufi path is in one ayah of Quran. He indeed succeeds or she indeed succeeds who purifies it. What is this it that the Quran is speaking of? Yourself. It's not your timberlands. It's, yourself. <laughs> it's not keeping your car clean. <laughs> oh, yes, brother in the back. Your soul, the nafs. Allah is talking about the purification of the soul, and in Arabic, that's called taskiya to nafs. So the whole path of Isan is based off of Taskiyah to Nafs. Now, who knows what is the Nafs? Anybody? Oh, my Nafs made me do it. Yeah, whatever. I can't control my Nafs. Nafs is appetite. Uh, uh, low, okay, wait. 
Who got a pen and pencil? I'm going to give y'all some textbook tasavu. In our teaching and in every teaching across the planet, you will find, according to the sheikhs of Tijani, Kalaria, Shadalia, Nakshabandi, Chistia, Shagafanabamba, has said there are four enemies on the path of Taskil to Nafs. This is classical Tasavu. The first enemy is Nafs, the second enemy is Dunya, the third is Hawa, and the fourth is that devil in the White House. Ooh, did I say that? I mean, the shaitan, the devil. <laughs> Stop for a lot. <laughs> Somebody said, Hock. Hockey Bill Hockey. Truth of the truth. <laughs> now stop for a lot. So these are the four enemies. You need to know this because some people were saying the Nash was passions and desires. But that actually comes under what we call Hawa. So the Nash is very specific. The Nash is your soul. If you ever studied any of Noble Dr. Ali's teachings, he's teaching on the higher self and the lower self. If you ever study Hinduism or Buddhism, they're teaching on the seven chakras. But in Islam, in the Holy Quran, there's four verses that go over the seven types of the soul. Maybe that might be important for this group. I did a PowerPoint on it. You want to hear it? Here it go. Let me stop. <laughs> I stuck for a lot. So, uh, I'm going to give you something that you can actually look up for yourself. The first level of the soul is called Nash Amata. Nash Amata can be found in the Holy Quran in uh, chapter 12, verse 53, where it says, the, the human soul is certainly prone to evil unless my Lord does bestow his mercy. So the lowest level of the soul is called Nasamata. It's in chapter 12 of the Holy Quran, verse 53. And it says this soul is prone to doing evil. Honorable Elijah Muhammad said the black man is hard to lead in the right way and easy to lead in the wrong way. This is according to this lowest level of the soul, Nasamata. How many people you know you can't get to come to the masjid, but they'll go to the nightclub with you? Mm. In Philadelphia, they got. Yes, sir. A'udhu bilahi min a shaitan irajim. I lived in Philadelphia for 10 years. Enough to make a Muslim go crazy. The Muslims in Philly got an after hour speakeasy that open at 2 o'clock just for the Muslims. I don't know. I know, but I met a sister who goes there. I don't want to get into I'm saying that now. One of my favorite mosques I used to go to was Cuba Institute. And in the Kuba, they said the only problem in Philly is the Muslims. If we could get the Muslims to practice Islam, it would be better. Now, I'm not down in Philly. I love Philly. Philly was actually the best place that I lived. But I'm just giving an example of how far we can get from Islam. I wouldn't come in the masjid and just make something up. I met a sister who goes to this after hours joint. But I would be lying. I shouldn't mention that. Back to the subject. The Nafs. Why did I say that? Because the Nafs. The Prophet Muhammad said, peace be upon him, the Nafs on the inside is a far worse enemy than 70 shaitans on the outside. This is Hadith. Your Nafs, your lower self, is a worse enemy than 70 shaitan on the outside. This is the first enemy. Um, we mentioned Nafs Amara. And it says, this human soul is certainly prone to evil. That's in the crime. Let's go to the second one. We try to make this fast. The second is called uh, Nash Lawama. It's in... Uh, Nash Lawama is in my favorite sewer, one of my favorite sewers. Chapter, known as Kiyama, chapter 75, verse 2. Now listen to the difference of this soul. The first soul was inspired to do evil. This type of soul, Allah says in the Quran, 
I do call to witness the self-accusing soul. How many people saw that verse in the Quran? The, the lowest level of the soul is a soul that is prone to evil. But the second level, Nafslawama, is the soul in Surah uh, 75 where Allah says, the soul that is self-accusing. The first level of the soul, the person is in pure darkness. They have no conscience of right and wrong. But the second level of the soul is when the person becomes self-accusing. They start to ask themselves, why am I doing all of these wrong deeds? The self-accusing spirit, why don't I wake up and make my father salat? Why didn't I make Isha, I just went to sleep? This person is starting to wake up because they're asking why they're not working on their self. The third soul uh, is, you know what, I'm gonna give you some homework. I'll give it to you in English, but I'm gonna see if, yes ma'am. The ayah, oh yeah, it's uh, chapter 75, verse two, is the ayah for the second level of the soul. Now that was the homework I was gonna give you for the thir third one. I'm gonna tell you the verse in English, and then let you try to find it on your own, just to get, do some chronic research. The third level of the soul says in English, in the Holy Quran, and he inspired to the soul to know it's right from it's wrong. This is the third level. And this is called the, the Nas Mulhima. Huh? Mutmaina. Nas Mutmaina is actually the fourth level. We didn't get to there yet. Nas Mutmaina, I'll give you the verse for that. But Nas Mutmaina is the fourth level of the soul, and that's the soul at peace. And actually, my teacher in Africa said the fourth level, level the brother mentioned, Nas Mutmaina, is the hardest station to get to out of all the levels. Yes, sister. Well, we didn't get to level uh, five, six, and seven yet. The first level, let me go over, is Nasamata. I gave the verse for that one. The second level is uh, Nasalawama. I gave the ayah for that one. The third one is called Nasmulhima, and this is a soul that is inspired to do good. Now this is where what we call the jihad al nafs comes in. Once the Prophet Muhammad Salam, left a battle where a lot of uh, Muslims got killed, it was a very bloody battle. And the Prophet Muhammad Salam, said, we are leaving the minor battle, going to the greater jihad. We're leaving a small jihad, going to the greater jihad. And the Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, O Prophet Muhammad, we just left a battle where a lot of Muslims died. How can you say, we're going from a small battle to the greater jihad. The Prophet Muhammad said, the Lays Salaam, peace be upon him, the greater jihad is the jihad on nafs, the war against your lower self. And the war against the lower self does not start till you get to the third station of the soul, Nas Mulhima, that's when you're inspired to change your actions. The Prophet Muhammad Lays Salaam said, I came to perfect the character of mankind. This hadith, I came to perfect the character of mankind, is talking about he indeed succeeds who purifies it. How do you perfect your soul? Because, point blank, the Sufi path is nothing but good character and a dab. Sufis around the world say, whoever has better a dab, whoever has better good character than you, has better tasawuf than you. So it might not be about all the zikrs you did. It might not be about all that extra fasting you did. Did you give this lady on the train the seat and she was older than you? Did you get up and let her sit down? This is Sufism. Did you go to your grandma's house and take out her trash and, and do her clean her sink? This is Sufism. You know, my Sheikh Sheikh Ahmed Obama said his name was Kadim Rasul, which means he's a worker. For who? He said, I work for Prophet Muhammad. Here's the Sheikh, one of the biggest Sufi masters on the planet Earth. Sheikh Ahmed Obama say, I am the one who worked for Prophet Muhammad. Nas Mulhima. Now the fourth one is where it gets very interesting. The soul at peace, Nas Mutmaina, uh, is verse uh, chapter 37. Verse Ayat 27, it says, O soul at peace, come back to thy Lord. This is the soul at peace. Now, 
In order to get to the soul at peace, maybe I need to review because in order to get to the soul at peace, you're going to have to defeat those four enemies, which was the nafs that we're talking about. Lower self, higher self, bad qualities. Power. Second one is passions and desires. Dunya is materialism. And the last one is Sheikh Time. Now let me give you some sound advice from Sheikh Ahmed Abamba. Sheikh Ahmed Abamba said, these four enemies have a weapon. And if you know the weapon of the enemy, you can defeat the enemy. He said, uh, the Nafs. He said, the weapon of the Nafs is overeating. My Sheikh said, if you're not fasting, you're not fighting the Nafs. Point blank. You can say, Sheikh Ahmed Abamba said, if you're not fasting, you're not fighting that lower self. Imagine if you had a pit bull at home. The pit bull could kill anybody in the house. Starve that pit bull, don't give him no food for a week, what'll happen? He ain't gonna bite nobody. That's how the lower self is, starve yourself. Prophet Muhammad used to fast every Monday and every Thursday, he fasted three days when the moon was full. Why you think he was, he's the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon he ain't got a, he used to fast every Monday and Thursday. If you didn't learn anything from me, learn this one hadith. Prophet Muhammad salam, said, anyone who fasts on Thursday, Allah will forgive the sins for the whole week. Don't that sound like an easy buyout? Wait, I can clown Monday through Wednesday fast? On now you can't, let's stop for a while. You can't clown. You should be trying to do some righteous ease, but the hadith says, if you fast on a Thursday, inshallah, Allah will forgive you for that week. We got the day of Ashura coming up, the 9th, 10th, and 11th. What is the hadith about fasting on these days? Imam, I'm sure, the Imam said, it's a fighting the Nash part of it is fasting. If you can fast on the day of Ashura, who knows the Barakah? What did the Prophet say? If you fast, some people will fast 9, 10, and 11. Some people will just fast the 10. But what, what, what would the Barakah be? I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know a hadith. I ain't gonna make one up. <laughs> Good question, though. Could you repeat that? But that was his sunnah. If the prophet fasted on Mondays and Thursdays, I'm sure he had a reason for it. But I don't have a hadith for why he fasted on Monday. But the one for Thursday was he said, if you fast on Thursday, he... oh please. Oh, the prophet Muhammad's born on a Monday. It's even said that. The hellfire is not as hot on Monday as any other days of the week. That is like, la ilaha illallah. Who is proper? Listen. Stop right here. All of the Sufi sheikhs are great, but every Sufi sheikh talked about the Prophet Muhammad. My sheikh never talked about himself. The only one he talked about was Rasulullah is the Kano Kalkali, the Quran says Prophet Muhammad Islam is the greatest of all creation. Do you? Metaphysical, pure tasawwuf, I won't say it twice. Before the creation of the world, there existed three lights, the light of Kamal, the light of Jalal, the light of Jamal. The light of Kamal was the perfect light of God. The, the light of Kamal was the perfect light. The light of Jalal was the light of majesty. The light of Jamal was the light of beauty. Allah projected the Kamal light to make the Jalal and the Jamal light. The Jalal and the Jamal light came together and made Nur Muhammad. From Nur Muhammad came the angels and everything else. Everything came from Nur Muhammad. Peace be upon him. But that's a metaphysical lecture that's not really for a masjid. Back to the Nafs. Fasting. Hawa, passions and desires. To defeat passions and desires, the Sheikh said, be quiet. Practice silence. Another teaching of Sheikh Ahmed Bamba is mind your business, to summarize it. A Muslim, he says, should mind their business. If it doesn't concern you, don't be at the beauty shop trying to figure out what happened to Aisha. <laughs> make do it for her. Oh, you hear what happened to Aisha? Boy, they laid her off at work. Did you make do it for the sister? The Quran says, pray for them, your prayers will benefit them. Uh, Nafs, eating too much. Don't eat six pieces of chicken, eat three. Stock them a lot. Howard, passions and desires. 
Stop texting. You pray five times a day, but you send a hundred texts. I'm trying to figure this one out. Shake. Five to lots and a hundred texts, brother. And then you can't even make five. Let me tell you. Crap book. I had to delete my crap book account. It was too much. I got to listen. Let me tell you this. If you're not making more than three salats a day, the shaitan is praying more than you. The devil prays at sunrise, at high noon, and sunset. Mm. If you're not making more than three, Allah Bilah is praying more than you. Why do you think Muslims, we can't pray exactly at sunrise? The devil is praying. We can't pray at high noon because the president is praying. I mean, stop it. I mean... <laughs> We can't pray at high noon because the devil is praying. We can't pray exactly at sunset because he's praying. Now, if you heard that Shaitan was praying three times a day and you ain't praying at least four, isn't you supposed to do five? Just think about it for a minute. You Muslim, get your life together, man. Shaitan praying more than some people in this room. Can you imagine that? Auzi Bilal, Nash Howard, Dunya. This one, you don't need the iPhone 28. I don't know which one you're on, but you don't need the 28. The 27 is probably still good. I got a ghetto $80 phone. People wonder why he got an $80 phone. I'm not a phone addict. I try not to be too much into Dunya. The third enemy is Dunya, materialism. The Sheikh says to defeat Dunya, you got to do some type of spiritual retreat. Fall back, as they say in the hood. Fall back from the going out all the time. Stay in your room and not be on crack book. Read some Quran, read some Hadith. The Sheikh said to defeat Dunya, abstain from it. You don't have to go to the club every Friday. Just go three Fridays a week and stay home and read. I mean, I'm just trying to keep it real with you. Come on. Stop for a lot. I was a nightclub DJ. DJing in reggae clubs and hip hop clubs. I know people ask me, I don't have to party. I did enough partying for 10 lifetimes. I need to be in the masjid. How many people heard of Salatul Tasbi? Salatul Tasbi? The Prophet Muhammad Salam, was riding with a Sahaba on a horse and he turned to the, maybe it was a camel, I don't know, but he was riding on an animal. Let's say that to be factual. Might have been a camel. Might have been the horse. I ain't the one to tell lies on the prophet. Stop a lot. I don't know for sure which, what it was, but he was riding with the Sahaba. He turned around and told the Sahaba, let me give you a gift. The Sahaba said, yes. The Prophet Muhammad Salam said, I will give you Salatul Tasbi. The Prophet Muhammad told the Sahaba, if you can do it once a day, do it once a day. If you can only do it once a week, do this Salat once a week. If you can do it once a month, do it once a month. If you can do it once a year, do it once a year. Then the Prophet Salam told the Sahaba, if you can only do it once in your life, make this Salat to Tasbi. Salat to Tasbi is a four rakat Salat where you recite the Al-Fatiha and SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. It's supposed to be recited I, got, I, I need some blessings. I'm sorry. When you say Allahu Akbar, you say SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, la 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 la, Allahu Akbar 15 times. Then you say the Al Fatiha. Then you say the same SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, la 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 la, Allahu Akbar 10 times. Then you go into Ruku. Then you say SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, la 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 la, Allahu Akbar 10 times. You come back up. SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, la 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 la, Allahu Akbar 10 times. You go into Sajjah 10 times. 10 times and 10 times. Then when you stand up, you did the zikr 75 times. What's 75 times four? How many? Three. So in the zikr, you made the zikr tasbi. This is called a tasbi in some languages. Salatul tasbi is the four rakats given by Prophet Muhammad with the tasbi with the zikr inside. Why do I give this? Because this Salatul Tasbi is another way to defeat the nabs. If you're doing a retreat from materialism, you can stay in your house and do Salatul Tasbi instead of being on Instagram for 30 minutes. 
Okay, if you don't understand Salat al-Tash, we look it up online. How much time I got? Because we have another Sheikh, Sheikh Abdul Rashid, who I want to. It's time. Okay, I'll end with Salat al I did, I get to. I got to the fourth level, but that ayat, if you finish the ayat that I gave, if you go to uh, chapter 37, Verse 27 is for uh, the fourth level. The fifth, sixth, and seventh levels of the soul are in the same ayah. That's what I want to let you know. It says, O soul at peace. That's the fourth level. Uh, enter, no. Return to thy Lord. Well pleased, well pleased. Exactly. Well pleased with him is level five. And then when it says, Allah is well pleased with you, that's level six. And then when it says that enter into my jinnah, that's the seventh level of the soul. And it's all in one verse. Astaghfirullah wa tubulay al-fatiha. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ar-Rahman ir-Rahim. Maliki yawmideen. Iyaka nabudu wa iyaka nasta'een. Idina sirata mustaqeen. I want to give my salams to Imam Talib. I was here uh, when he led the Asr Salat, and when, I, when he saw me, he said, Brother, I'm always glad to see you. I got a nickname for you. I said, What? He said, I'm going to call you the Smiling Shake. He said, Every time I see you, you're smiling. I said, Well, the zikr is making me smile. Alhamdulillah. Abdul Rashid uh, is my teacher, my guide. He is a man of many traits, I would say, mashallah. Allah has blessed him to be able to travel the world. He studied in Sudan, the Sudan, um, many, many, many years ago before cell phones existed and before, you know, so he was uh, in the desert sitting and studying with grandsons of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the people who the Sheikh studied with are complete inheritors of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, not only through bloodline, but through spiritual experience and realization. So the knowledge and the wisdom that Allah has blessed this man with is extremely unique. I have benefited from him in many ways. So I ask everyone to listen and open their hearts to what they may receive. May Allah continue to preserve our Sheikh Sheikh Abdul Rashid for our benefit, for our community. Inshallah ta'ala. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I hope you bear witness that nothing deserves to be worshipped except Allah, without partner, without associate. And I hope you bear witness that Muhammad, to whom the Quran was revealed, is the slave servant, the messenger, the seal of the prophets. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forever send peace and blessings upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family and his companions, and all the rightly guided servants until the day of judgment. Ameen. As-salamu alaykum. Alhamdulillah, it's an honor again to be back here at uh, Mosque of Islamic Brotherhood again. This is my third time being here at this uh, esteemed night of the Aswan Lectures. Tonight's topic, inshallah, briefly, I will be speaking about the inner dimensions of the spiritual component of Islam as it applies to the American Muslim experience. Alhamdulillah, we as Muslims in America are very unique in that we carry with us a legacy of spirituality. Many of us came out of Christianity 
in Christianity of the different components of Christianity, when you look at us as the African American people, you will find that the Christianity that we practice was probably the most spiritually inclined of all of the Christian denominations. This is not by coincidence or accident because we don't believe in coincidence or accidents. We believe in the color of the law. And when we study our history, many of us came here from Africa as Muslims. And many of us came here from Africa from the descendants of Muslims that go back hundreds and hundreds of years. So this component of this concept of spirituality is within our spiritual DNA. As Sheikh Sufi so uh, eloquently stated about Tassouf, or what we call Sufism, I don't really like to use that word actually. I prefer Tassouf because to me, when I say Tassouf, I know exactly what I'm talking about. When I say Tassouf, I'm talking about the science of the purification of the self, heart, and soul. When I say Sufism, when I'm around people who understand what that word actually means, then I might use it, but in the English language, many words can be misused and abused, and Sufism is one of them. So I try to stay away from that term. Someone once asked me one time, they said, suppose you woke up tomorrow and you weren't a Sufi. How would you feel? I said, it wouldn't bother me one bit. I didn't know I woke up today being a Sufi. But I said, if I woke up tomorrow and I wasn't dead, and I know, if I woke up tomorrow and I wasn't Muslim, I would rather have died in my sleep. I repeat. They said, well, suppose you woke up tomorrow and you weren't a Sufi. I said, well, it wouldn't bother me. But if I woke up tomorrow and I wasn't Muslim, I would rather have died in my sleep. On this path of Tosawaf, or this path of the purification of the self, heart, and soul, everything must be rooted in Islam. Anyone that claims to be a Sufi, and their root of their Tosawaf, or their Sufism, is not grounded and totally rooted in Islam, as it was described by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they are astray, plain and simple. There is no tasawwuf without Islam. It does not exist. Anyone that tells you that they're a Sufi and somehow they have transcended the need to be Muslim, they are lying and you should run from these people. But they are astray. We have, as Sheikh Sufi again said, we have Islam, we have Iman, we have Islam. When the Prophet Wasallam was asked, what is Islam? What is Islam? He said, Islam is first to testify that there is no God but Allah. Muhammad Wasallam is the messenger of Allah. That is the fundamental principle of what each and every person who claims to be a Sufi must be grounded in. Is the total Tawheed and oneness of Allah indivisible, without partner, without associate. When you are totally grounded in the concept of the absolute oneness of Allah, this protects you away from and against the worship of any human being, angel, jinn, or anything else. Anyone that comes to you and say, says that there's a, there's, a, there's a need for a medium of a sheikh to get to Allah, they lie. You don't need a shake to get to a law. Anyone that comes to you and says, well, I make dua to the shake and the shake takes my dua to a lot, leave these people. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, leave this nonsense. Because it's nonsense. The Prophet Sallallahu was asked, what is Islam? He said to testify that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. To make the five salats. Salat. Make the five salats. 
the greatest form of dhikr. If anyone tells you that you can sit around and say, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, and somehow this is superior to making salat, they are lying. Run from these people. I'm telling you. If I tell you this, run from me. They are lying. Those of you who are my students, if I tell you that I have come up with some type of formula of dhikr that is superior to salat, run from me. To establish the five prayers on time as they were made by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To pay the zakat, to fast the month of Ramadan, and to make the pilgrimage to the house of Allah, inshallah, once in your life. Then he was asked, what is Iman? The belief in the oneness of Allah, the absolute oneness of Allah, without partner, without associate, without medium, without help. You don't need any helpers to help you get close to Allah. In fact, you don't even need to get close to Allah. What we need is to become conscious of Allah's nearness to us. Allah is not distant. Allah is near. Our consciousness of Allah's nearness to us is what we need to have. And you don't need any man or woman, place or thing to help you become conscious of Allah's nearness to you. Anyone that tells you you do, they are lying and leave them. I don't care if they're from Europe, Asia, Australia, Antarctica, North or South America, and yes, Africa. If they tell you that nonsense, run from them. They are lying. What is Iman? To believe in the oneness of Allah and to believe in the prophets, all of the prophets. But the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is the last and final seal of prophets. There's no more prophets. There's no more prophets. And there are no sheikhs who are comparable compatible or comparable to prophets. Anyone that tells you this nonsense, run from them. Because this is the danger that is contained within what we call commonly Sufism. Don't fall for this hocus pocus superstitious nonsense. Stay focused on your Islam. we told to believe in the books, all of the books. But the Quran is the final revelation. There's no orad, there's no weird, there's no reading this, reading that, that's hocus pocus, that's nonsense. Follow the Quran. It's the seal of prophecy, it's the seal of revelation. And the Prophet Muhammad says, is a seal of prophecy. We're told to believe in angels. We must believe in angels. The angel Jabril, alayhi salam, the one who brought the revelation to all the prophets. The two angels that are on your left and right shoulder. The angels that will question us in the grave. We must believe in these angels. But as we know that angels are creatures of light, so they are also in, in, in conjunction with the belief in angels is also the belief in jinn. And don't fall for anyone that comes to you telling you about some type of seer or siru to conjure up jinn because these people are the enemies of Islam. And you should slay them where you find them. Anybody got a problem with that? See me. We don't need no jinn. We have a law, subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is Islam, and this is the truth to soul of Islam. We don't call on anyone or anything except the loss upon Allah wa ta'ala. That's it. And we believe, we don't believe that this life is the final existence. There is a life, there has been a life before this, there is this life, and there will be a life after this. And we will all have to stand before Allah and be held accountable for what we do. I will and you will and we all will have to stand before Allah. And none of us will enter into the paradise except by way of Allah's mercy. 
Not even the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam. Aisha radiallahu anha said, not even you, Rasulullah sallallahu wa sallam. She, he said, no, not even I will enter the paradise except by way of Allah's mercy. May Allah have mercy on us all. Amen. Ah, and we must believe in the divine, the divine decree of Allah, the qadr of Allah. It's no accident, it's no coincidence that we're sitting here at this time, at this place, at this moment. It's by the color, by the destiny of Allah that you are listening to my voice now and this might be the last time that you will ever hear my voice. But let it be said that I did not tell you what I'm telling you. And you have to go forth and tell those who are not present what I told you. That we have been blessed with Islam. It is the ultimate blessing that we can ever obtain. But it's Islam based on the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and there's no Islam beyond the Sunnah of Rasulullah, the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It is all contained within the Book of Allah in the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was asked, "What is Islam?" Ah, he said, "Islam is to worship Allah as if you see Him, but you see Him not." But you know that Allah sees you. To worship Allah is if you see him, but you see him not, but you know that Allah sees you. This is Isan. This is the, the threshold of what we call to soul. This is the beginning of to soul. This is the beginning of the spiritual path. When you get to a level of spiritual consciousness where you are aware of Allah's nearness to you and when you are worshiping Allah, not only in form, not only in salat, not only in going through the rituals, but your very existence becomes a continuation of the worship of Allah. Every single aspect of your life is continual in the worship of Allah. You eat, drink, sleep, breathe, heartbeat Allah. Then everything becomes a worship of Allah. Then you stand before Allah and say, La bake, Allahumma la bake. This is not a joke. We are living in the most treacherous, trying times in human existence. But we, we are not afraid. We're not fearing any man or any woman. We're not fearing anything because we have a la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But we came to the shores of North America with la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah we are living in the manifestation of prophecy. We are living in the end of time days. When will be the hour? No man, no woman knows, but we know the signs. So what will save us? Tusky and us. Purification of the self, heart, and soul. Purify your heart. Purify your heart from what? By the soul and by the inclination, and by the perfect perfection in which the soul was created and the inclination within the soul towards good and evil. Verily, those who will succeed will be those who purify and verily, those who corrupted will be those who fail. Allah swears by the knock of the human being. By this self and the perfect proportion in which it was created, the human being is created perfectly imperfected. In our imperfection is perfection. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, had I wanted to, I could have made you angels. When, when, when the human being is in submission willfully to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when the human being willfully submits their will to work in conjunction with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they ascend beyond the angel, higher than the angel. But when they willfully submit to their lower self, their nafsamara, and they follow the way of their animal self. They descend lower than the animal because the animal is only following their inherent nature. So if a man behaves like a dog, he's worse than a dog. If a man behaves like a dog, he's worse than a dog. Because a dog don't have no choice. 
human beings have a choice. When we choose to, to feed off our higher consciousness of the higher levels of the soul, then we actually ascend higher than the angels because the angels cannot disobey. We can. So when we willfully obey, we ascend higher. When we willfully disobey, we descend lower. May Allah give us now, in these times, we need all the help that we can get. Is there a place for tasawwuf in Islam? That's not the question that should be asked. The question should be, is there Islam without tasawwuf? Because how can you have a body without a heart? If you have a body without a heart, you have just a dead body. If the heart stops beating, you have a dead body. The Prophet Sallallahu said there's an organ in the body holding healthy, the body is holding healthy. It's diseased, the body is diseased, that's the heart. He also told us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when we sin, a dark spot enters upon our heart. And then we continue to sin until the heart becomes dark. And he said the heart must be polished. And the Sahaba said, oh Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we understand how to polish a pot. He said you must polish the heart like you polish a pot. He said, they said, we understand the polishing of a pot. But how do you polish the heart? He said, there is but one way, and that's the continual remembrance of it. We must begin everything with Bismillah. Actions are only by intention and everyone, every man, woman, and child who reaches the age of accountability will be held accountable by that which they intend. We purify our intention by saying Bismillah. Bismillah is the fatah, it opens. It opens the heart. We're talking about the purification of the heart. When we say Bismillah, it opens the heart. We begin everything with Bismillah. Once the heart is open, we fill the heart with a stuck for Allah, the Imhuat to Abu Rahim. Oh Allah, we seek your forgiveness, and you are the acceptor of repentance. A stuck for Allah, the Imhuat to Abu Rahim. Bismillah. Astaghfirullah adhim huwa tawabu rahim. Allahumma salli Allah Sayyidina Muhammad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that Allah sends prayers on the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the angels send prayers on the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We should love Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than we love anything of this dunya. Including our own selves. When Omar ibn Qatab anhu came to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu he said, Oh Rasulullah sallallahu I love you. He said, how much? He said, more than anything in this world. He said, more than yourself? He said, no. He had to be honest. No, not more than myself. He said, your love is incomplete. He came back a second time, same thing. Your love is incomplete. He came back the third time. He said, yes, I love you more than I love myself. He said, you shall be with the one you love. May we all be on the Yamu Kiyam with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May we all be on the Yamu Kiyam in the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Any eye that has not shed a tear from the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has never seen. You see, but yet you're blind because if we really seen the blessing, the rahmah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a rahmah, as a, as a mercy to all creation. If we really understood the value of us being in the ummah and the community of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we would cry all the time from love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. La ilaha illallah. There's nothing greater that you can say than la ilaha illallah. Nothing. There's nothing greater that can be said, that can be uttered from our mouth than la ilaha illallah. 
If you took all of this dunya and put it on one scale, one side of the scale, and put one, one sincere la ilaha Allah, one, on the other side of the scale, that one la ilaha Allah would totally annihilate this whole dunya. Because this entire world is not as valuable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the wing of a mosquito. If you take the smallest insect, a gnat, and you take one wing, Allah values that wing of the net more than all of this dunya. But one sincere la ilaha illallah that comes from the deepest recesses of our heart is more valuable than all of this world and everything it possesses. So we cannot say la ilaha illallah enough. And when all of this world has failed, and it will fail you, and it will fail me, your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your husband, your wife, your children will eventually fail you and everything in this dunya will eventually fail us. But when all else fails, Hasbunallah wa ni'ma wakil. Allah alone is enough and Allah will help you and take care of all of your affairs. We must believe this. If we don't believe nothing else, we must believe that Allah alone is enough. And Allah will take care of all of our affairs. So when, it, so when it seems like the world is coming in on you, when everything has abandoned you, you can't get no help to the right or the left. It seems like everything is just falling apart in our lives. Say, Say, oh Allah, you alone are enough and you take care of all of our affairs. The first time that this was uttered was by Ibrahim alayhi salam. When he, when he was getting ready to be thrown into the fire. And his father said, all you got to do is come back to the word, to the, to the way of shirk, to the way of multiple gods. He said, no. He said, Allah when near my wakil. Allah alone is enough and Allah takes care of all of my affairs. And the fire became a garden. When the fires and trials and tribulations of this life is coming in from every corner and it's going to come. <laughs> Say, Hasbunallah when Nehemiah will kill and this fire will become a garden. You can believe it or believe it not. When you say Allah alone is enough and Allah takes care of all of my affairs and you mean it. This dunya, this world, this hell on earth will become a garden. With one Hasbunallah with Nehemiah Wakil. Allah alone is enough and Allah takes care of all of our affairs. This is the soul. And every single Muslim community in America needs a tasawwuf element within the community. This is what the missing component has been all these years. We've had the scholars go overseas and study, and many of them went to Saudi Arabia, and all they brought back was fitna. And they divided us up and made us fight each other over some silliness that some desert Arab taught them. But then when someone comes amongst you telling you that we need to sit and remember Allah, we need to say, Hasbunallah wa ni'ma wa kill. We need to say, la ilaha illallah. We need to say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. They say, oh, stuck for Allah. Bidda, alhamdulillah. You take that nonsense back to Saudi Arabia. Let me say, la ilaha illallah. This is the missing component. Because we have the knowledge, we have the understanding of the Sharia, we have scholars in Sharia, we have scholars in Fiqh, we have people who can teach us the Aqidah and teach us how to make wudu and how the proper way to make Salat. What's missing? What's missing is the purification of the heart. What's missing is the love for each other. None of us truly believes until we love for each other what we love for ourselves. And we can never love for each other what we love for ourselves until we purify our hearts of all of the filth that has been accumulated in these hearts. Arrogance. Arrogance. Jealousy. Envy. 
malice, backbiting, lying, lust must be cleansed. Once these things are cleansed from the heart, we will look at our brothers and sisters and we will see ourselves. Because the Prophet Muhammad said, you are mirrors unto each other. So every time we look around and we say, ah, 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 we see what we're really looking at is what's the filth is in us. Once that filth has been purged, then all we will see is beauty because that's what we are. <laughs> this is the soul wolf. And this is necessary in every community in America. And everywhere I go, my blow is what I just told you. I've been on, I've been Muslim almost 50 years. Eight children, 24 grandchildren, two great grandchildren. I've been married since I was 20 years old. I don't know what it's like not to be married. But all of that means nothing if we don't have la ilaha illallah. And if we just have la ilaha illallah without this adab that the Sheikh spoke about, if we have la ilaha illallah but we're not exhibiting the true character and moral and educational excellence of Muhammad Rasulullah, then we don't have Islam because Shaitan says la ilaha illallah. If Shaitan walked through this door and you said, Shaitan, who is, who is God? He said, La ilaha illallah. But ask him to say, Muhammad Rasulullah, he can't say it. Can't say it. He couldn't bow down to Adam, who was the first. How could he, how could he say, Muhammad Rasulullah, who was the best? La ilaha illallah, not enough. And we can't just say Muhammad Rasulullah in closing. We can't just say Muhammad Rasulullah because the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his final sermon said, I leave behind two things. I leave behind the book of Allah and my sunnah. If that sunnah only meant how you look, how long your beard is, how short your pants are, how long your jalab is, then that would eliminate the women. He didn't say I leave behind two things for men. In fact, most men are not living up to the example of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as the women are. And that's a fact. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said it doesn't matter whether you're black or white, whether you're male or female, the one who is greater in the eyes of Allah is the one who has the most taqwa. If my wife has more taqwa than me, then she's better than me. And I can't lord over her because I'm a man and I'm not living up to la ilaha illallah and I'm not following the example of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. but she is, then she's better than me. And that's a fact. Taqwa. To have a sense of God consciousness, to have awareness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you. All the time. Allah is our basir. Allah is our raqib. Allah is the seer. Allah is the watcher. Allah is our shaheed. Allah is a witness over everything that we do. Allah is our sami. Allah is hearing not only our words but our thoughts. Taqwa. Tawakal. Trust in Allah. Husband Allah will hear my wakil. Allah alone is enough and Allah takes care of all of our affairs. We must have total trust in Allah. If we've never trusted in Allah before in our lives, we must trust in Allah in these times. Because Allah is all we have. That's it. Rida, contentment. When you have rida, when you have a sense of contentment, then there's no more complaining. There's no complaints. It's all good. Where do you get this from, Sheikh? It's in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, know with certainty that all good comes from Allah and everything other than good comes from the doing of your own selves. So when you have a sense of contentment, true resolve with Allah's decree, it's all good. Gratitude. 
How do you show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? There's nothing we can do to give Allah anything. Allah needs nothing. You know how we can be grateful to Allah? I'm going to tell you. When you look at each other with love, when you look at each other and you see your, the love within the eyes of your fellow human beings, and you do unto each other as you would have each other do unto yourselves, and you truly love, when you help and feed and clothe those who have no food, no shelter, no clothes, when you give unto the least of Allah's creation, you are showing your gratitude to Allah. That's how this works. Patience. Sabah. If we don't have sabr, we're going to blow it in the end anyway. You're going to blow it? Because shaitan, shaitan waiting on the straight path. It's just waiting. Just waiting. Okay, you do this, you do that, you do this, you do that. But somewhere along the course of your sojourn, of this spiritual journey from from Allah back to Allah, you're going to come to a point where the shaitan is going to present in front of you whatever it is that your naf is inclined towards. If it's money, it's going to be money. If it's fame, it's going to be fame. If it's notoriety, it's going to be notoriety. If it's a pretty woman or a handsome man, that's what's going to be standing right in front of you. But if you have sabr and you reflect back to that moment when you said Ashadu la ilaha illallah, Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, and you put all of this behind you. And you can always reflect back in your mind to that re reoccurring shahadatain. Ashadu la ilaha illallah, Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, and you keep that on your tongue continually. Then when the temptations of this world, and they will appear to you, they will disappear and dissolve like the illusion that they are. Allah says in the Quran that this world is a fleeting illusion. That the reality is to come. Finally, love. Love. Not lustful love. Lustful love is when you love something and you expect something in return. <laughs> Whatever that may be. We lust for different things. But I love you, but I expect something. No. One of the categories of people who will be in the shade on the day of judgment when there will be no shade are those who love for the pure pleasure of love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Asking and expecting nothing in return. Love. When that love has truly entered into your heart, when you truly exhibit the true love that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sent as a rahmat to alameen, a mercy to all of creation, and everywhere you look, you see the signs of Allah. As Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says in the Quran, everything in creation remembers Allah, but you know not which way it remembers Allah. Wherever you turn, you see the, the, the manifestation of the names of Allah and all of the creation. When love begins to emanate from your heart towards each other, when and if we can reach that point, then there's not a face or purpose or place on this earth that can defeat us. May Allah put us in that station. May Allah guide us and protect us and have mercy on us. May Allah put, keep us in the Ummah Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate us in spiritual consciousness. May Allah elevate us in the spiritual stations. May Allah give us that, allow us to rise above that animal self and allow us in that contending self to, to, to lead to lead towards those things that are good and bring us to a consciousness where we are the peaceful self. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to establish the Islam and the Iman in our hearts and allow us to exhibit his sin. And may Allah forever send peace and blessings upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family, his companions, and all the rightly guided servants. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst the rightly guided servants. And may Allah allow us to love each other for the pleasure of loving each other. And may Allah bless us and have mercy on us in these troubled times. Ameen.
Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.